CYC is a free channel that presents the Word of God for everyone. Your support will help us to continue the mission. Visit our website, cycnow.com. Even a dollar will make a difference. back FEQ viewers. Uh, today we are very blessed and honored to have His Grace Bishop Yusuf, Bishop of the Diocese of Southern United States. Welcome back Sayyidna and thank you for joining us. It is the only way to truly live with God for He is life in itself. God's great desire for us is that we love Him, listen to His voice and hold fast to Him. Today we will continue our um, discussion about the life of submission and obedience. Uh, Your Grace, um, some people um, have misperception about uh, the life of submission. They tend to bail out their responsibilities and they just let God do His work and they just um, uh, don't do anything about what they're expected to do uh, as far as um, doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, of course, this is not submission. Uh, if we go back to uh, the prayer of Jabez that we discussed last uh, session, Jabez said, your hand be with me, not instead of me. Your hand with me, so I will do my part, and God will help me in doing my part. But uh, he did not say, let your hand replace me, or instead of my hand. Uh, in order to be successful in your life, there are two elements. There is a human element and a divine element. My part and God's part. My part is what I can do. God's part is what I cannot do. God will never do for me my part. Otherwise, God will be enablers enabler for lazy people. Uh, for example, God said to Peter and his uh, companions, launch to the deep and sit, uh, cast the net for a catch. That's their part. God will not do it for them. But to catch many fish, that's God's part. They cannot do this. God said to the people, you know, remove the stone. That's their part. And then God actually raised Lazarus. That's his part. God, he told them, offer what you have. So they offered the five loaves and two fish. That's their part. Then God blessed the five loaves and two fish, and he fed the multitude. That's his part. So I need to do my part, and then God will do his part. But without doing my part, and I say, you know, I'm, I'm submitting to God's will, so let him do everything, I, I will do nothing. That's not submission to God's will. There's laziness. Mm -hmm. That is irresponsibility, mm -hmm. but not submission to the will of God. But let's say we do our will, and we work hard heartedly, and uh, God does not fulfill his promise. Uh, for example, somebody studied for a test very hard and then it turns to be that they were not able to uh, pass their test. So they did their part, but yet God did not fulfill what they expected Him to do. Actually, actually, uh, maybe to rephrase what you said, I didn't find my expectation. But I cannot say God didn't do His part because God is faithful in all His promises. And if he promised something, definitely he will fulfill it. But many times my expectations are not met, as you say. Mm -hmm. So I am praying for something, I'm expecting something, but this doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. uh, this doesn't mean God didn't do his part. Uh, and we need to know there are many forces working against the will of God. And God may allow that some forces will succeed temporarily. 
in order to reveal his power uh, at the end. But at, at the end, as we read in Romans 8, all things work together for those, for good, for those who love God. So even if in the beginning, I find my expectations are not met, but at the end, I will see how all things worked out for good for me. And let me just give two quick examples. The first example is that Daniel prayed and he was confused. And in order to uh, relieve this confusion, God sent Archangel Gabriel to appear to uh, Daniel and to explain to him, you know, uh, and his confusion. So he, he will help him to explain the vision that he saw. From Daniel's part, Daniel waited for three weeks, 21 days. And in his mind, God did not fulfill his promise. Nobody answered me. I'm confused. But from Archangel Gabriel part, as we read in the book of Daniel, actually Satan stood against Archangel Gabriel for three weeks, fighting with him preventing him from going to Daniel to uh, relieve his, his confusion. And at the end, God sent Archangel Michael to fight with Archangel Gabriel against Satan. And after Archangel Michael and Archangel Gabriel fought with Satan, at the end, Archangel Gabriel was able to go to Daniel after two, three weeks. And he told Daniel, from the moment that you asked, God answered. But Satan stood against me for 21 days. And Archangel Michael came to help me. These are the words of Archangel Gabriel. And at the end, I am here to tell you so and so and so. So from Daniel's part, where is God? God left me from, from uh, 21 days. But actually, God answered his prayer in the same day. And this story shows the power of all the opposing forces. And they, uh, they are actually working against to destroy God's will, to challenge God's will. But we know God's will at the end will prevail. And the second story is the story of Joseph. Joseph took food to his friends, uh, to his brothers. He was expecting you know, his brothers to meet him with love and appreciation and gratefulness. But instead of this, there was a conspiracy about killing him, then selling him as a slave to Egypt. Joseph did not lose hope, and he did not say God did not fulfill his promises. And he was faithful in his master's wife, in his master's uh, house. But his master's wife wanted to sin with him. And in spite of his faithfulness, he ended up in prison. And I'm sure most of the people know the story. But at the end, God actually did not let Joseph down. He became the second man of Egypt, as we read in the book of Genesis. What I'm trying here to say, yes, maybe in certain areas in our life, we feel that God did not meet our expectation. But no, God even if, if these opposing forces succeeded temporarily, but at the end, everything works out for good for those who love God. Okay, uh, on the other hand, God allowed for tribulations and trials for those who love them. Uh, even though that could be a uh, difficult time that uh, will make them lose trust in God. Uh, why will God do that, especially for those who love them? Uh, I'm not sure if, uh, if I answered this before, but let me just uh, answer it quickly. For tribulation and trials, there are actually five reasons. And if I go through a difficult time, I should see which reason is the direct cause of my suffering. Because based on the reason, I will choose my reaction. And... Uh, uh, sometimes more than one reason work together. So it's not only clear cut, it's one, this or that or that. What are the five reasons? Number one is my own mistakes. 
uh, for example, if I don't study, I will fail the exam. If I drive carelessly, I will end up in car accident. Mm -hmm. Then here, the, the pain or the hardship or the trial is because of my own uh, mistake or sin. Number two, the corruption of the world. Uh, as we know, after the fall, uh, after the, fall uh, the world was cursed. And we live in a corrupted world. St. Paul said, all creation groans from corruption in Romans chapter 8. So we are living in a corrupted world. That's why there are hurricanes. That's why there are volcanoes. That's why there are earthquakes. That's why children, instant children, are born with congenital anomalies. That's why people get illness from nowhere and nobody knows what is the reason. They say it idiopathic. So uh, because we are living in a corrupted world, that's why people suffer. Number three, uh, it can be because of the envy of Satan. Satan is envious and is attacking the people of God, attacking the church of God, uh, triggering persecution all the time. So maybe I, my suffering is because of the envy of the devil. Number four, because the suffering is, uh, could be a discipline from God. So as a father discipline his children, and uh, as St. Paul says in, in uh, Hebrews, when we are disciplined, the time of discipline is not a joyful time. But at the end, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. So like uh, when a mother disciplines her son, the son actually during the time of discipline, he doesn't feel joyful. But at the end, uh, he, he will reap the fruit of righteousness. And discipline can be for a mistake or discipline has nothing to do with a personal mistake. For example, if my son drove his car uh, carelessly, uh, beside maybe he will get into accident, but maybe I discipline him, I'll take the car keys for one month from him. So the discipline is related to uh, a mistake that he did. But in other situation, for example, if a son asked for a toy and his father knows that he has a lot of toys, so he decided not to bring him the toy in order not to be spoiled. Mm -hmm. So he didn't do any mistake here, the son. The son didn't do any mistake, but the father want to discipline him, want to make him uh, not spoiled. So whether, whether the discipline is because of a mistake or not because of a mistake, but it is not a fun time for the person who is disciplined. And the fifth reason is what we call test of faith. Test of faith. Like when God tested the faith of Abraham by asking him to offer his son. Or when God tested the faith of the widow at Serfet Saida when he sent Elijah during the time of famine, and wanted the widow to make cake for, for Elijah first. Uh, so, of course, this time of test uh, is not a joyful time. It, it, it seems, or we perceive it as trial, suffering, pain. If we understand these five reasons, then when I go during difficult time, I should decide which reason is it in order to choose my uh, reaction. If it is because of sin, my reaction should be repentance. If it is because of the corruption of the world, my reaction should be perseverance. If it is because of the envy of Satan, my reaction should be putting on the whole armor of God. If it is because of discipline, then my reaction should be accept the discipline. As St. Paul said, if you don't accept discipline, you are illegitimate children. And if this test of faith, the reaction should be obedience to the commandment of God. So these are the five reasons of trial and hardships, why we go to trial and hardships, and how I should choose my reaction to these five reasons. But how can we differentiate between a trial uh, that is meant for uh, uh, faith testing or for uh, disciplining from God and uh, temptation coming from, uh, from evil? 
Like, uh, let's say somebody was just diagnosed with cancer. Uh, how would you uh, categorize this kind of temptation? Is it coming from God because he's really trying to put him into testing his face or is it from evil? No, when it comes to diseases, uh, like the example you say, uh, most probably it's because we are living in a corrupted world. Uh, because we are living in a corrupted world, that's why people uh, catch diseases. Uh, of course, there are some diseases uh, has direct relationship with sin, like a uh, person drinking, alcoholic, he can end up with liver failure, or something like this. But, uh, for example, virus C is, is spread among many, many people. But that's because of the uh, corruption of the world. You know, we're living in, in, in a corrupted world. Uh, when God actually disciplined us, or uh, testing our face, uh, testing our face will be with related to a very clear commandment. God gave me commandment and he wants to see whether I will obey the commandment or not. So with the widow, uh, he was testing her generosity to give, uh, honoring the man of God. So God tests us uh, with a commandment in the Bible to see whether we will obey his commandment or not. Uh, discipline, as I said, either related to a clear uh, mistake that I did or a clear sin that I did, or it will be clearly that God is protecting me from uh, some evil. In the For example, I may pray uh, to be rich and maybe God will not answer this prayer, you know. And he, maybe God, in his foreknowledge, knows that richness uh, can, can corrupt my life and, and take my spirituality. And there's actually a story about Ologius. Uh, Ologius was, uh, you know, he was a very poor person, worked in, in cutting stones, and uh, then actually he, he used to make you know, very, very little money, but in spite of this, he was so generous. Mm -hmm. So one of the uh, monks, when he saw how this poor man is very generous, he said, he prayed, and he told, said to God, God, if you give him money and he became rich, he can help more and more people. If he is so generous while he is poor, then actually if he makes more money, he can help more people. And God actually answered the prayer of the monk and gave Ologius uh, a lot of money. But in spite of helping more people, actually he drifted completely away from, from God. And the monk felt huge guilt because of this prayer, this godly man became unrighteous. So actually he started to pray to God to take all this uh, richness uh, away from him. And uh, at the end, actually, God did this. And he took the money from Origius, and Origius uh, returned it back to his uh, first life uh, as a humble person, loving God, living a spiritual life, helping the poor. So what I'm trying to say, discipline here uh, will be clear to the person that God is protecting me from uh, certain evil. Uh, that's why he is disciplining me with this. But in the situation of diseases, most of the time either, be, either before direct sin or because we are living in uh, a corrupted world. With this, we end our discussion today. Uh, thank you, Grace, for being with us. Thank you. Dear. Saint Anthony the Great said, if the soul surrenders totally to God, into his goodness, he will change the situation and change your fault one by one. So, if all the great writers and Christian believers from the most ancient of time, let us all strive to the one who calls all to salvation for the, for the promise um, of the blessing to come. Thank you for being with us today. Hopefully, we'll see you next time with more questions and more answers. Mm -hmm.